Hello and welcome to A Place to Call Home. I'm Portia Evans, your host for today. We are here with the organization VOTE, the voice of the experience, and we are here to talk about an important subject matter. Glad to welcome my guest to the studio, Kiana, Kiana Calloway, Kelly Garrett, and Consuela Gaines. They are all uh, with the group the vote and like to welcome you guys to the show today. Thank, Thank you. you. It is so good to have you here to especially talk about this important topic, uh, a topic that uh, affects a lot of people. And a lot of people don't know that the state of Louisiana have given those voiceless people who are just getting out of incarceration a voice again and a chance to reclaim their voting rights. Why is this important? Duh. <laughs> but it is very, very important uh, to build change, to build healthy communities. And uh, we're going to get uh, each of you, I'm going to start with Kelly, uh, to tell me how you got involved with this particular organization, ma'am? Well, um, as you know, Ms. Portia, I've been on your show before, and I've been involved in several different organizations surrounding criminal justice reform, um, Louisiana to Prison Alternatives, um, Unanimous Jury Coalition, it's, it's one of the most previous ones. And VOTE has always been a partner with um, Louisiana to Pr Prison Alternatives and kind of spearheaded a lot of the movement, particularly the, the regaining felony voting rights back, um, as well as the unanimous jury. So I'm very excited to be a part of this organization why do you um, think a lot of people are not for that initiative? Um, I don't want to. I don't want to say that people aren't for it because it did pass in November um, on the electoral ballot that we were going to regain voting rights for um, for convicted felons. Um, and so I, I don't want to put out there that that many people aren't for it. I think people aren't aware that that's what's happening um, and they aren't aware of what particular laws are in place and how the laws are written because previously um, a person can be on pro parole or probation for decades um, and as long as you were on parole or probation you, you were not, not able to vote um, but I think making people aware that um, now, decades is a really long time um, to not be able to voice your opinion, especially if you're being represented. You know, many people say it's taxation without representation. If you're eligible or liable to pay your taxes, then you should be able to vote and have your voice in electoral elections. And Kelly, what is your title with the organization? My title is Policy Council, so I will be working really closely with legislation, um, making sure that um, local legislators here in Acadiana are aware of the legislation that is coming through the sessions and getting them knowledgeable with what this actually means. And hopefully we can get a lot more things done in the ne next coming sessions. Wonderful. And Ms. Consuela Gaines is here. She's also been on this particular program. Consuela has a wonderful, wonderful story, and I always say I am so proud of you, young lady. Thank Tell you. a little bit of your story. Well, <coughs> at a young age, um, I found myself in love, and that guy, you know, he was facing 20 years in prison for four counts of armed robbery. Me being young and at the time didn't really have any goals or anything set for myself, um, I decided that I would try my best to help him out of that situation and I concoct a plan to break him out of jail. And Right here in Lafayette. In Opelousas. In Opelousas. In Opelousas. And? And um, I went armed with a sawed-off shotgun and assisted him in escaping. In escaping? From the Paris prison after he was sentenced to 20 years for armed robbery. Okay. And Got eight away. days later, we were apprehended in Ty Tybee Island, Georgia, and extradited back to Louisiana. And for that crime, you spent? I spent 22 years in prison. 22 years of your life. 
Two your young years. life. Yeah, I was young. And now you are out and you are employed. You're uh, getting ready to get your voting rights restored. In a few years. I still have to wait about three years. Three years before you can do that. So, I mean, that's a long time, 22 years. Yes. So, tell me uh, how things have changed from the time you uh, got out. I know that it, it had to uh, look like uh, something from outer space to you. A lot of people think that, but really it wasn't. Because my family kept me intact with what was going on. They, they kept me informed. And I made sure that I stayed informed as far as dealing with computers. I took um, office system technology. So I was knowledgeable about a lot of the technology. I just had never been able to use the Internet or have access to the Internet right. while I was incarcerated those 22 years. But um, the only thing really that I that I noticed did advance and change was in fact technology um, and people. People were less merciful to me. I noticed that um, most people were just pretty much off doing their own thing. They weren't a family unit anymore, and that baffled me. You know, I didn't realize it until I came home and saw the separation and the distance that families kept between themselves. And I was, I was in awe when I saw that, you know, because um, I've always been a family-oriented type of person. And to see how families weren't family units anymore, it just let me know how crime and um, incarceration came into play because the families have been torn apart. That is wonderful. Now, Louisiana has the highest incarceration rate. The in second the highest. Second, second highest, highest now. now. Second mm -hmm. In the country. What is it, Alabama, Arkansas, one Oklahoma. of them? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Okay, yeah. well, thank God somebody took that top spot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway. Most of those people incarcerated are our young men. And I have a young man here. His name is Kiana Callaway. Kiana, are you from Lafayette? No, ma'am. I'm from New Orleans. From New Orleans. Yes. Well, share a little bit of your story, young man. What a start. <laughs> uh, at 16, 1994, um, I was arrested and convicted for two counts of first degree murder. On robbery and feeder side. Uh, 96, I was uh, actually convicted of those charges and sent, went up for death row um, in 17 and was sentenced to two life sentences. Lord have mercy. Yeah. Uh, and um, just at that point, I was just blind to a, to a lot of things, especially life, to just top it off. So um, it was like a, like a walk to me sitting in countless trials and just uh, hearing different people just pass judgment on my life and a whole bunch of things um, that was just above my head was sounding like something like the Charlie Brown um, commercial um, cartoon. Oh, well, well, How old were you at the time? I, I, was, I was 17 going 17 to the trial. 17 years yes. old. Uh, and to top it off, I didn't commit those crimes. That was not my, my charges. Um, so that's what made it kind of hard at the beginning to accept being in prison, but then I have to understand that there's no God higher than God, and he puts you in situations to actually mold who you will become, and I guess that was my way of molding into the man that I am today. But um, in 1998, after spending a little bit over three years in Angola with the two life sentences, um, my charge was remanded the Fifth Circuit granted me a, a reversal. They remanded and set my, my, my case aside for, for, for further proceedings. Uh, after about three more years of trial, um, going back to court from Angola, back to Jefferson Parish, New Orleans, uh, I was found guilty again before a lesser charge, which was manslaughter and sentenced to 34 years. At that point, I had maybe 11 years left to do. It was, it was kind of like relief that I, now I have a, 
actual release date. So I have to prepare myself for when it's time for me to come home, knowing that I can't erase what happened in the past. And a lot of people say that's important, just having a number yes. behind your name. Yes, yes. Because when I first went to Angola in 1996, uh, my release date on my rap sheet was zero zero slash zero zero slash zero zero zero. <laughs> like I'm a, I'm dying here. Yeah. You know, and um, that was that was harder than actually sitting in the courtroom hearing the judge say guilty of these charges or, or, or your sentence to life, no possibility, no probation, no parole. You know, that was, it all went fast until I got to where my actual comfort zone, which was Angola, to build who Kiana's supposed to be in so many different ways. Because now, being placed in the land of wealth and learning, like, you have to get it yourself. Nobody's forcing you to go to school. Nobody's forcing you to, to do anything. Or let, you could go lay down in the cell block. All day. All day. And they have people like Mr. Will Burrito, not Will Burrito, um, his name will come to me, but he sat in solitary confinement for 42 years. Will Burrito was my homeboy out there, yeah, Lady I, Charles. Yes, I, I know Will, Mr. Will real good, real well. Um, Woodfox. So, Albert Woodfox, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, he gonna get mad with me when I say I couldn't, <laughs> when I couldn't remember his name. Um, but it's like having the opportunity to be a voice for the voiceless, because there was many nights that I laid in the cell and wonder, like, who's fighting for me? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm this person that's in prison for something that he didn't do, like just a victim of systemic racism, like all the way around the board. Uh, 16 year old, impoverished youth, mother working two, three jobs, she don't have money to get an attorney, so I have to roll with a state attorney. Um, I'm only seeing them sporadically when it's just for, tr for court proceedings, so you know, my information about what I was doing was nine and void at that point. So um, the, all, the actual all people who found me vote Norris Henderson, Chico Nancy, like they were my mentors in prison. I used to, instead of me playing basketball and football, I used to sit in the law library. That's when they were only giving us like two days out the week to go actually go in the law library to you know, research a case or just get into that, into, that, into that environment. So one day, my first day in the law library, you go Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So my first day in there, I asked Chico, he was the inmate counsel. I said, man, I need to find my case. I haven't been up there probably about four months. I said, I need to find my case. He said, the brother, you see all those books up there? He said, they ain't enough. Look for them. Come, come talk to me when you find it. So I, I just went, looked at about two, three books, and I sat down because I'm dumbfounded. I don't know what to look for, how to start, what to do, how to do anything. So after they start seeing my persistence and, and my dedication to really want to understand how can I get out of prison, that's when they started like really sitting outside and saying, man, I like you because you, you, you're trying to help yourself. And I'm sure you are not by yourself. There's a yes, lot of young men yes, ma yes, ma serving time behind bars just like you. Um, a lot of people refer to like a story of being a uh, needle in the haystack, I'm more like a, a needle in the stack of needles, you know, because there's a lot of individuals personally that I know that's in prison for things that they did not commit. And um, it, it just deals with me how the system, it, it finds ways to keep us in prison instead of actually finding ways to uh, really rehabilitate or really get to the, the root of the why, the reason why you're in prison. So I want to ask you, uh, Kiana, how will it feel to get your voting rights back? And you told me, as we were talking before this show, that this will be the first time in your life, in life. that you will be able to cast a vote. In my life. Um, I've been doing this work for about five years straight, like focus, tunnel vision. And I've driven maybe to people to the polls maybe twice out twice a year, just making sure people get to the polls. And I sit in the car while they go cast their ballot. I second line to the polls and sit in the car while they go cast their ballot. Now this time I'm going to leave the second line into City Hall and be the first one to cast my ballot, <laughs> um, just to have that 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 feeling that now I have a say so. So we've got upcoming elections, Miss Kelly. We do. We do. And we've got some upcoming elections, and we are looking forward to, first of all, registering some people to vote. But more importantly, we're looking forward to 
getting this message out that if you are soon to be released, how, oh, well, tell me the steps. If you are soon to be released, you can well, re-register? No, not, not exactly. So the law that was passed indicates that you must, e either you're off of probation or parole okay. um, completely, and you have the proper documentation to, to prove that. Your diminution um, of sentence. You can go and register to vote. Um, and, and what also passed is if you are currently on probation or parole and you have been out of incarceration, you've been out of jail um, for five years, okay. then you will be able to register. Without committing another crime, of course. Correct, within the past five years. Now, something to look out for, and we're still working the details out on the back end, is that um, a, a letter should be given to that person, either by their probation officer or the parole officer, um, or, or DOC, a letter from DOC indicating that they are eligible to vote. They would have to bring that in um, to the register of voters and register in person with that. I know several people who that affects, and that is good to know. But uh, we are here, if you're just joining us with the group, vote, the voice of the experience. So tell me what's coming up next for the organization. What are, you, what are some of the things you're doing next? Well, the first and foremost thing is definitely informing community, um, the communities around the state of um, the March 1st registration of voting, of re reclaiming your voting rights, which begins March 1st. Um, we want to get as many people um, that fit the criteria to get out there and register and prepare themselves for the upcoming elections. There are a few special elections between now and October. Obviously, the big elections are October, November. Um, but there are a few special elections in special districts. Um, so just informing those people of those elections um, as well as getting them registered is very imperative. Um, the second thing that we have for the year um, is um, the legislative session that begins in April. Um, we are, as we have in other sessions, gone in with several criminal justice reform bills that have turned into law. So we are following up on that and we're, we're fighting hard to keep the existing bills that have passed still in play because we will have some opposition in regards to those re reinvestment justice bills. Um, and then, of course, we have the elections coming up. Um, we have 144 vacant seats in, the, in our state capitol that will be up for grabs um, in October, November. So we want to make sure that the right people um, are being elected in those positions. And one of the ways that we're doing that is we're just going out and we're meeting these individuals and we're asking them what is their stance on criminal justice reform here in Louisiana. Um, and if they don't have one, they certainly should get one because that is a hot topic for this session and we are really um, looking at endorsements in regards to those particular individuals that do have a firm stand on that. And that is good to know. Yes, we need to hold our legislators accountable, see where they stand, find out what this person is all about. I always tell people to research the candidate and uh, find out what they're about. But uh, Consuela, I always, Something else I always say, <coughs> excuse me, is what do, what do you have to say to women, first of all, that are, that, that are coming out of incarceration? Uh, I guess the, the main thing that I have to say to them is not to accept no as an answer. And I think that was the thing that kept me going. Um, because doors will be shut in your face and you will be told no by some people, but not by everyone. And just to be persistent, especially knowing their rights. And a lot of people say, well, I, I hear from a lot of people who said, I can't get no job because I got a record. And da, 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 da. I got a record. Well, um, we're definitely trying to do what we can to um, stop that because of course there was the ban the box when they were asking people if they were convicted of felonies um, also dealing in housing so that's something that that is kind of ongoing because I, I know some applications still have those boxes on it when they really shouldn't but 
people need to learn how to be prepared for situations like that. And a lot of people don't realize that there are a lot of major companies who get tax credits galore right. mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they hire a convicted mm -hmm. felon. Mm -hmm. Right. They get tax credits galore, and we know that. So don't give up. Mm -hmm. You know, just keep applying. Keep trying. They tell you no, oh well. Keep right. trying. That door is going to open for you sometime, sooner or later. Because I, I went through it. You know, I experienced a couple of two, maybe three months of me constantly applying, putting applications, not getting any callbacks. But then eventually I had to I had to crawl before I, I learned to walk. I started at fast food. I started in waitressing. So um, sometimes you may have to do little odd jobs or minimum wage jobs that you don't really want you know and that's you right. feel like that's not your work you're worth more than that and it's and it's good for a person to feel that way but sometimes we have to start at the bottom before we can make our way to the top i tell people uh there was a time in my life that uh, i had a job somebody gave me a job mm -hmm. i did not have a car mm -hmm. I was living in Karen Crow. I rode a bicycle mm -hmm. because somebody gave me a job. I rode a bicycle every day. I ain't missed a day of work mm -hmm. since. <laughs> I rode a bicycle to work mm -hmm. because I was so grateful that somebody took a chance and hired me. And I have been, I don't miss no work. <laughs> But anyway, I am so proud of you, young people, and I am so proud that you have come to share your stories and your testimonies. Now, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you locally, how could they do that? Well, they can get in touch with me. I'm the community organizer here in Lafayette. They can call me on my cell at 337-212-5074 or they can email me, Consuela at vote-nola.org. All right, and Kelly? Um, same thing, I'm the policy counsel, um, Kelly at vote-nola.org. And Kiana? I'm, I'm the housing justice organizer in New Orleans. All right. Um, you can definitely contact me at Kiana at, no, at votes-nola.org. All right. Now, what, what, what does housing, the housing, um... Uh, <laughs> to to, to kind of, I really want to... I ain't got but two minutes now. It's so. all good. To, 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 to piggyback what, Con, what Consuela was talking about, like, a lot of doors get slammed in, in people returning home from incarceration, the faces of those people. But first, what we're in the process of doing is rewriting the laws, um, amending the laws, uh, smoothing, the, smoothing that playing field when people do return home. And in the process of doing that, we must change the narrative of how people think and speak of people returning home from incarceration. Um, banning the box for job for housing applications, for housing um, residents coming home is mandatory in the city of New Orleans. Like it's maybe, there was a study done by New Orleans Fair Housing Action Center where Mark Renners went out, 50% uh, white, 50% black. Uh, the disparities of that research were unbelievable just to know how many people that were African-American trying to get these apartments were denied and people that were white trying to get these apartments were pretty much accepted with the same background type of criteria. So uh, discrimination in housing is definitely used as a proxy of race. And since our, 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 our um, mores, norms has been, has been kind of snatched away from us and our, folk, our um, um, has been start snatched away from us. It's kind of hard for us to understand what we need to do and how we need to do it. So, in order for us to, to change that narrative, we must change the way that, that the laws were scripted against us. So, uh, an ordinance was implemented through the city of New Orleans for fair housing for people returning home, just to limit leasers asking um, the leasees, "Have you ever been convicted of this felony?" We also banned the box for employment in the city of New Orleans, so they could no longer ask about a criminal history or criminal background until initial um, application, uh, until further application process. And Kayana, I am so proud of you. Thank I you. want you to stand there and uh, 
FaceTime yourself. <laughs> Can you do that in the voting booth? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I might, I might, I might go live. I might Can go you show live somebody <laughs> that you're voting, young man? Yeah, I might do go live. Thank you so much, all of you, for coming on the show today, for being with us. March the first. Look for this organization to be around. Going to be doing some great things as the big voting initiatives comes forward. Thank you all again Thank you. Thank for you. being on today. And uh, you must register to vote by February 28th. Is that what I'm reading here? So they to won't be, able, be to, able to register until to be March able to 1st vote. when the law goes into <clears throat> Right. Okay. It will be March 1st. Yeah. Uh, March 1st. We're going to get you all re-registered. Thanks again. That's going to wrap up our show today. And we'll be back again next week with another topic, another guest, and something else. In the meantime, you be blessed for a place to call home on Portia Evans. Bye-bye.